I'm not a great fan of these boilers. We need to be good at all boilers. This is a learning for each one of us. And I think it's important that we all learn different techniques and learn off each other. That way we can all benefit as opposed to just being smart asses. So let's try and help each other out. The way I do it isn't necessarily the way you'll do it. And I'm sure your way could be better than mine, but this is the way I do it. So let's get cracking. Let's go to work. Worcester Bosch, what do we know about this? Serial number 588 signifies Worcesters have got their own codes for these. So 588 is August. If you had 589, it'd be September 20, 2005. Clearly you're going to subscribe to the channel. This has been turned off. I think it's a Worcester Bosch engineer. This was found outside of a job. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly strip this down as fast as I can. If I can find out why he turned it off. Enjoy the video. Going to whip the cover off. Inside of the case. A bit dirty. So I'm going to wire this up and actually see what it does. Clearly broken from there. Clearly it had no stat before. Right, let's wire it up. This chock block comes out. Ooh. In fact, that to me looks like they've cut it while it was still live. It's turned on. See if the fan runs. Pump's running. I can hear the ignition. I can actually see it. So the boiler actually is working miraculously. So now we've got to ascertain why he's turned it off. So straight away, you can see here some rippling. I've got a theory on this. Creates steam and then as it cools down, it shrinks. And that's how you get this suction and expansion. That's my belief. Maybe you got some thoughts on that and how and why. Have a look in here. There's a load of muck in there. Another one that's never been serviced. Can't really fault this if you've never had it serviced. Worcester Bosch. There are aspects of this that I think, wow. You proper cocked up here, guys. But they were very, very popular for all sorts of different reasons. There's a pin here. You basically pull that out. Yep. Pull this up. Yeah, lift this up. So you're out. Quite often that will give you grief. I'm going to whip this out. So ratchet spanner is your friend here. Crank that, little spring that, lift that tab over, a little bit of a wiggle, that's you. Typically I'll just take this completely out, you don't have to, you can just keep it to about there if I remember rightly. Grab a hold of this, if I remember right you don't even have to take the electrodes or any of the cables off. Simply spin, just to whip that off. Yeah, a bit of a wriggle. Yeah. Be careful of the yellow, sorry, the orange. Push, I generally find if you push that down a bit, that's why I say normally leave that in, will perish and break, but this one looks fine. So there you go, there's your, your little flap bearing plate as they call it. Clearly the fan works okay, so no issues there. Undo the clip here, pop it out, whichever you prefer. It's got heat, heat transfer paste on this one, so main thermistor, and then you've got a second overheat. Pop the electrode off here. So that's your pair of electrodes. They don't actually look too bad. Rectification lead. There's a latch that goes underneath at the back. Lift up, lift out. Clearly you can see here, 
there's been some issues. If we grab a hold of the electrodes, so this is the access for when you have to clean the baffle. Okay, I'm just going to take the two out. So clearly that's never been serviced. I don't think I've ever seen a dirty one of these. I can see that's pretty dirty. Yeah, then. And then below that, you've got this. And that is solid. We've got to find a way to get that out. Right, so a little bar that I use, and a pair of grips, and we'll just give it a tug. There you go. So it's a little bar that I made, pulled this out. So let's have a look, 14 years, my guess is this has never, ever, ever been cleaned. And I think I'm pretty much right there. Yeah. So that's how I remove one of these. And if you have a look inside, you can see Pretty darn nasty. Remove all the electrics out of my way. This is why I use the angled ones. Because when you get a, you can grab a hold of them, but you don't. When you pull them, they come straight off without flying across the room. Dub that goes into the hex. We don't care. This is the reality of when one of these has been on for quite some time doesn't actually want to come off too easy. Which clearly I can get to from here. That is just held on by the weight. So I'm going to leave that clip in. Hopefully that all stays in the right place. Underneath one of these. And then you just a bit of a twist. It's anything like that one. Talking of that one, you can actually see. Well, I've tried everything to get this out. I kept the clip in. I didn't, and then I tried jiggling up. You can see I've busted the case to pieces. So now the only thing left for me to do is to cut it off. What a palaver! It's virtually welded in there. Don't forget to subscribe. About another 20 more minutes, it would have come out. 15 years, that ain't coming out in a hurry. Now it's on the bench, you can probably see a little bit better. All of the crap that's accumulated at the bottom. All of the years of neglect. Not actually much to do with the boiler. Lack of servicing and the fact that these are quite difficult to service. So. And if you look down, you can probably see the rippling more now. Yeah. The ways on here, if I draw them, yeah, you've got one spiral there, one there, one there. So in actual fact, if you imagine it rotates around a bit like a kebab and allows the water to come up to the top and that. So depending on how you view these some may say that's a leaking hex so the guy clearly had plenty of experience and felt that after all of these years that was a done deal so good on him clearly that would have been at the back there at the front where we were looking couldn't see it so well if we look in the casing Evidence there at the back, a little plug. I think it's for one of these. To show you how you would change a PRV and to change the turbine and generally have a look inside of here. Gauge off, pump out. Crack the pump. And see the general state. There's also some fragments in here. Two big lumps there. Uh, 
and there they'll start to perish. This is what I do, clamp that, twist, anti-clock. There's an O-ring, washer on the top, it looks like that. Don't lose it. Take the plate out, other side, undo this clip which holds the pump to the body, pop that. This is the expansion vessel tube. Twist. Then from here you would simply so from there disassemble that, pull that across. Yeah. Have a quick look, see how bad does look like one of the originals. In fact, when they've soldered this, it looks like they've melted the handle. One of the old ones that didn't have the Kermit the Frog. As we're here, that's what's inside. You can see the actuation of the paddle is just merely up and down closing. So, yeah, that just blocks, so it either goes allows it to run round the return or it blocks it so that it has to add loads of these so on this side you would clearly grab a hold they're all anti-clock squeeze an anti-clock squeeze anti-clock pop this this would come out you will be doing these, these are always failing, they're pinhole. Okay, pull out. That's why I like these. And pull. Yeah. When you do pull here, twist, twist, twist. In the past I have had to, sometimes you have to, um, sometimes I'll shoot a bit of WD-40 in here or I'll just undo it from there. But in this case, there you go. Merely pull it out and this will be, normally it bursts there or it bursts on the top there. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Opening here, which allows for inhibitors and chemicals of your choice to go directly into the seal at the top so that you can keep it pressurised throughout the installation. On the left here, metal shroud of valve. Clearly that's where you add the pressure. And on the right hand side is the outlet that has a feed into the bottom of the vessel. Also has an on off and stop the flow. Let's give it a go. Step one is to isolate the boiler. Step two, attach the hose. So with the boiler connected to the pipe, you can now open up the valve and release the pressure from the boiler into the vessel. You've now discharged the system pressure into this. At this moment, you can check the boiler pressure. Simply open that. Take the system pressure right down. You've now discharged the boiler to zero. Boiler is isolated. You can turn this off. You can open this. And check a water sample. From here, you can discharge this water and introduce more inhibitor. And check for water quality. With the system pressure at zero or thereabouts, you can then test the vessel. So this is about a litre. So I've pre-mixed it and this is by the sides. Put the lid back on. This is closed at the moment. Personally, I use a foot pump. Open that up. Open up the valve. We're at one bar. It's us. Done. We check the boiler. You can now turn it back on with no gas on. Pressure should be displayed. 1.1, thereabouts. Cycle. 
biocide now is circulating around the boiler. Just check the pressure, 1.5, 1.1, pretty much what it was on before. We open the valve, discharge any pressure from this line, loosen that off. This has been soaking in WD-40. This is the part that gave me a whole lot of grief. And we're going to try and pull it out here. Oh, that was never going to come out inside. I'm going to buzz through this. Tell you what, I'll put the other glove on. Take this out is that socket point there so you can see there there was some it's, it's almost like there's a uh, silicon silicon grease or something like that so that doesn't look too bad there's a seal down the bottom seal at the top now that This is the interesting bit. So clearly the water comes from the bottom up each coil. Each one of these spirals up. So entry point at the bottom, yeah, which could in theory get completely blocked, yeah, which you can see there has already started. And then it would naturally come round there, yeah and then start its way to come up each one of these. Finally getting up to the top, which I think would be there. If we have a look at where the spillage point at the top was, that would be it there. So if you look across that, that'll take quite a lot of crap to fill that up. You can see large O-ring, and you can imagine if there's any acid in here that will get behind this aluminium, it will start to try and fur its way through. Hence why the water quality is very, very important with aluminium. Put a few notches in, grab a hold of each one, bend them back. Bit of a file. Perfect. Yeah. So now you can put it in, twist wherever it needs to be and wrench it out. It's the finished tool and the idea. So this is made from 40 by 20, so 40 millimetres by 20 thick deep unistrut. I got a bit of this off my next door neighbour who's an electrician. So the idea is that this will pull out uh, the Worcester. So 215 millimetres from top to bottom. Yeah, 14 mil slot in there, 12 mil off the bottom of here. Cut that in, and then you have the tool. This is two and a half mil thick. This is really strong. This will probably last you a lifetime. It slots beautifully underneath there. Bit of filing, yeah. and then you've got an anchorage point. You can pop it back in. Take a bar of your liking, pop it under. In a perfect world, you'd put a tiny little slot in this bar, yeah, so that it anchors it and holds it so it won't slip back. Wrench it up. So just for any newcomers, you would wash this out and with a spinning brush, a uh, Worcester do one, but you can use an ordinary one. Pop it down there, pull it backwards and forwards, clean it all out. Use a larger one up the top here. Once you've finished, in the trap at the bottom. Once you've done that, you would then rinse through at the bottom on the plastic bit. And everything you need to know about a Worcester Bosch Green Star.